Morning and welcome to another demonstration of a new Cyvex product. And today we're going to be talking about our new Cyvex water injection module. This module, as you can see, is absolutely tiny, but it packs an absolute powerhouse in what it can offer. So you've probably heard the term water injection uh, thrown around for many years on different products and different cars. And uh, generally speaking, it's quite a simple installation and setup to use. But what we've done is we've actually taken this module into the latest generation of technology to this in cars. What I mean by that is that most of the cars on the uh, ECUs on the cars now all communicate via CAN bus. This Ferrari F8, this Porsche behind me, all function on a CAN bus interface. Now again, CAN bus has been around for a long time, but none of the systems that are on the market really take use of what this powerful system can offer. Now years ago, water injection systems were connected by teeing to inject duty wires and RPM signals, etc., in order to get the data into the uh, competitors' modules. We actually allow you just to connect to these two wires on the car on the CAN bus and pick up all of that information. Now, if it's not on a car that we support in our supported list, that's in our manual or on our website, fear not. We also support the full OBD protocol. Obviously the F8, we've got the CAN bus information for that via using the OBD2 protocol. The Porsche behind, we've got the full CAN bus data because we offer a plug and play kit for that. Where we offer so many plug and play kits for so many different cars, the great thing about that is we have lots of CAN bus information available to us in databases. And we've incorporated that into this little module here. So that means that all of the different, pro like different cars that are available that support OBD2, you can plug this little module into it and grab all of the vital data that you need in order to control your water injection system. The actual unit has got the ability to control two injectors. Now, when I say two injectors, you could control actually more than that. Um, the outputs are able to handle up to 15 amps each. It's, it's got four generic 0 to 5 volt inputs and four frequency based inputs. The four 0 to 5 volt inputs can be used for a pressure sensor. Uh, you can also use it for a level sensor, a manifold pressure, external other sensors, etc., that you want to use. And then the frequency inputs can be used for a flow sensor, pick up an injector duty signal, for example. So what that means is that we can actually then have all the safety strategies that you'd ever really want in a water injection system. You've got flow sensor, so you can monitor how much flow, and if in the event that the flow is low, put a limp mode. You've got pressure. Obviously, we have full closed loop control of the pump now. So in the event of the pressure not reaching its target, uh, it will basically go into a limp mode. You've also then got the ability to monitor lambda from, we pick it up from the OBD or the CAN bus. So you can see the actual air fuel ratio that is actually inside the engine at that given point. Now, generally on a lot of the, uh, of the um, water injection systems that are available on the market, these just basically have a relay that turns on a pump or not. And then you have a nozzle that sets the amount of flow that you want. Our systems actually allowed you to cater for that but we tried to push it more to a, a point of actually using the injector or a solenoid to, to control the flow that you're actually putting into the engine. Some of these cars, for example, you might not want to fit a full standalone ECU on. You might just want to have like, even the original ECU tuned and then add a methanol controller on top to get some additional fuel into the engine. With that, you can work in perfect harmony because of the CAN bus and the ability to transmit custom CAN, which you can send to the original ECUs or to data loggers, etc. It means the two can work in harmony to be able to, to get the additional fuel into the engine and create more power. The flow sensor and the pressure sensor are quite useful because if the flow was to drop on the feed line into the injector, the system you can actually program it to automatically inject more opening time on the injector. That means that you can actually match then um, with a relative fuel pressure um, trim uh, or a relative flow pressure. You can actually basically say, okay, I'm seeing that there's a drop in pressure, let's add more injection. And sometimes the air temperatures can get quite hot in this car. Adding a water methanol injection system to this not only improves the uh, charge temperatures, but it also allows you to push the OEM setup even more because you can get more additional fuel out of it. Now, having the, the access to the CAN bus as well opens up a whole new infrastructure of actually being able to warn drivers when there is a problem. 
So I've talked about the fact that it's got a pressure sensor, flow sensor, level sensor. You can even monitor the lambda that's coming into the unit from the CAN bus, manifold pressure. And you can set limp modes for all of these different variables, i.e. if the pressure is not reaching the target that you're set, it will go into limp. If the flow is too low, it will go into limp. Now the great thing about that is this unit has got a full generic CAN transmit option. And in doing so, you can then send a CAN signal to your engine controller or to the original dash to basically say that there is a problem and actually bring on a check light. There is an output on the actual unit as well that allows you to wire an LED or a, um, a, an output that pulls to either low side or high side that can go to additional uh, ECUs, etc. to also warn. And you can set that to be a flash rate. So based on different flow, you can have it so that it's showing you how much the injector is opening as a flash point, or you can have it so that it just flashes and comes on in the event of a limp. It's user controllable and you can set all that up in our SCAL software. Having the ability to add a methanol system on top that's further back in the intake runner, when it's basically injecting the methanol in, what it will do is it allows it to take out all the latent heat. It evaporates very quickly and actually cool the charge really well. It also helps clean the intake runners of the uh, direct injection engine setups. So it's why it's very popular with cars that are on the new direct injection engines. Each of the outputs have the ability to monitor the current. So it can monitor the current of the pump, the injector, and in doing so, it can set up limps as well for that. In the event of an open circuit, i.e. the solenoid is being energized and it's not seeing any current draw, you can actually have an open circuit limp. Again, bring a light on the dash, and you can also have an overcurrent control. So in the event of the pump or something getting seized or there's a short uh, um, wires touching the body and it pulls a ridiculous amount of current, again, you can, that will instantly shut down the output to protect the device. And in doing so, it will then stop the, uh, and warn the, the driver that there is a problem with the water injection system. Now, that's all great with all these new technologies for the CAN bus based cars, but we do also support the older generation of cars that don't have CAN bus. So fear not, we've got you covered as well. The ability to pick up an RPM on one of the hall inputs or frequency inputs, as well as an injector duty, and then you can wire in a TPS or manifold pressure into the unit. It means you can get that data into here as well to be able to set up your um, water injection uh, duty cycles and uh, flow rates that you want to be injecting into the engine. Now you can communicate with the device all through USB. You can see that at the front of the unit here. Uh, a micro USB allows you to connect to the device. You can then monitor everything live uh, and control and update the unit fully live. Once you're finished, you just program it and it's then set and it's saved forever. Uh, it's really useful and we're going to go over some of that software and talking about what it can actually do with you now in this video. connected to the water injection module I've downloaded the S suite software from the Cybex website and forum and basically just opened up the SCAL software and connected to the water injection module via the uh, USB that was provided so you go to device connect it will find the module and we can connect to it live and start to go over some of the really cool things that it can offer so the first thing you're presented with is on the right hand side a list of variables that you can actually monitor live these are all live and you can open even more uh, by going to gauge, add, and then selecting a uh, variable. Let's go to ANO4 input, trace, 100 hertz. And you can actually then monitor that live as a gauge. You can even make that resizable and drag it as a trace along here and even pause the data by pressing spacebar. So you can then go back through the data when you are setting up stuff. It's really useful because you can also add in uh, additional items so on here you can add in say rpm and it will then display it at the same time and you can space bar and go through the data so that's a really useful thing first of all live monitoring live logging etc now on the uh, left hand side you can see the calibration tree and we're going to go through that to basically summarize why this unit is so powerful so the first thing that's obviously been talked about loads is the CAN bus support. So in the data stream, you've got the ability to first set the speed for the CAN bus you want to use. And then CAN bus zero is generally used for generic CAN receive. What that means is you can set an identifier, a slot, or an option to be able to set each of the items you want where they are on the CAN bus. And then the preset CAN receive would be the one that's used by most people in that it's got all of the pre uh, databases of CAN bus that we have from our engine control kit 
incorporated into the water injection controller to allow really useful uh, picking up of data from all the OEM cars. And if you go onto that list, you can see some of those cars and uh, models of uh, manufacturers that are listed that we support. The transmit OEM check light when water injection limp is active, talked about that in the release video. What that means is if we have, if you are using a selected, for example, if we went with say the Infinity Q60, in the event that the limp mode here on the right hand side was not going to be none, what that would actually do if this was enabled is it will bring the original check light on the dash on to warn the users. Okay, you can also uh, set under the water injection LED control a flash rate for that output as well based on limp mode. So you can have it so that you can display on an LED the amount of flow that you're the amount of injection duty that you're um, providing to the solenoid, but you can also use it for setting a flash time for a particular limp that is present. So that's really useful. The output type lets you set whether it's a low side, high side, or half bridge. Now, where I've gone through that LED control, all of the items that you need basically get assigned in the pin assignment. So in here, you can set what items are connected to what pins. So the WMI uh, pump, you can use either H-Bridge 1 or 2 for that. And the solenoids, you can either use uh, H-Bridge 3 and 4. Then when you're talking about the LED warning, you can use any of the outputs. The reason these are paired like this is because you can actually join these pins up together. So let's say you've got a pump that pulls a ridiculous amount of current, like 25 amps. You can actually use pin sharing technology where you use two pins of the water injection controller joined together and they will drive at the same time. And uh, that's really, really useful. So let, as we were talking about the limps, I'm just going to assign this water injection pump to the H-Bridge 1 and program it so it comes online. And instantly, straight away, you'll see that the pump open circuit has come on as a limp mode. The reason for that is that what it's tried to do is it's actually tried to prime the pump system. There's a prime time of five seconds. It's tried to prime it. It's looked at the current that's going for it. So we can have a look at that. So W uh, pump A, you can see that zero. It's tried to drive the output. It can see that there's zero current being pulled, so it's not connected to anything. So it's an open circuit limb. And, uh, and that would bring on an engine check light. All of the limp stuff is fully programmable. So you can change the flow limp, the level limp, pressure limp, the solenoid over an undercurrent and the pump over an undercurrent. And then the solenoid control is for exactly what it says on the tin. You can control a solenoid or injector externally uh, based on the values that you want to set in the 3D map. Now, as default, it's based on RPM versus TPS, but in the load select option, you can change that to be based on manifold pressure, injector duty, torque control, uh, torque value, etc. And after doing that, you can then feed in this table as you wish. Now, if you want to be able to switch between different levels of injection duty, uh, you can do this using the calibration switch. On the cars that we support the OEM CAN bus for, if you look at the data sheet, that's uh, the manual for the kit, it will basically tell you whether the select switch is able to come over from the CAN bus. What I mean by that is, for example, on a uh, Lamborghini Huracan, there is a, a mode switch on the steering wheel, which is for Strada, Auto and Corsa. We actually pick up that position. So Strada would be Cal 1, Auto would be Cal 2 and um, Corsa would be Cal 3. And when you look at the WIMM select, when you change those modes and you have your data stream set for that particular car, for example, once you've done that and you've programmed it, when you change that switch, this car will update. And in doing so, then you can change between the different maps that you have the flow of uh, injection duty that you wish to uh, apply. You can also enable the limps to be active in certain maps. If you don't have a level sensor and you want to turn off that limp, you do that here. Just disable it there and, uh, and, and same for the overcurrent and undercurrent. Now, as I was saying about the, uh, the pump stuff a minute ago, under here, you've got two options of different types of pump control. You've got the conventional just on-off pump where you basically set a torque, throttle position, engine speed control, etc. that you want it to just turn on at. Um, and this, the torque value here, you can obviously um, set if your car actually supports torque control. Then you've got a PWM control, which is a closed loop pump control strategy. So if you've got a pump and a pressure sensor, you can actually not need a regulator. You can control the pressure using this strategy. 
So you've got a full pressure target system with a duty cycle and a full PID uh, linking into that based on your pressure error and derivative. Really useful. Um, and if you are having to want to just control the pressure on the feed line for the injection and you don't have a solenoid. Coming down to the sensors, obviously you've got all the different types of sensors that you can wish for. Flow sensor, level sensor, pressure sensor, trim pot, an enable switch here. Uh, injector duty, if you're wiring in a uh, teeing into the injector um, on the original car, if you want to grab that data. It does grab the injector duty as an option from ECU streams. <clears throat> and coming back to where I said about the minute ago, the, uh, the calibration switch, where you've got your um trim pot here you can obviously set that the input type and then the selection switch the cow switch which is the wami select switch you can set here the switch source select as default is from CAN bus but if you do want to wire in a calibration switch you can change this to be based on an am input and then select in the io configuration here the um under the wmi calibration switch you can set under here the input which you wish to use for any of the four inputs. So that is a good in insight of what this unit can offer and how the safety strategies are in place. Lots of pizza testers have been using this and absolutely loved it and we hope to see you using it too. Let's just go over that again. Full CAN bus, Safety limps for pressure, flow, current monitoring of the pump output and the injector. So in the event of an open circuit or an overcurrent situation, it will bring a limp on. And then you've got lambda limps. You've also got a level limp, so you can monitor the level sensor that you'd have in the tank in the front of the car. And there's many more things. Because we have the CAN bus data for a lot of these OEM cars, in the event of a limp mode, we can actually make it so it brings the original engine management light on or send a torque limit into the original engine ECUs or into a Cybex ECU. That's really, really useful because not only does it make the installation simple, it means that you can take that peace of mind in knowing that if the nozzle got blocked or you run out of water and methanol injection, that you know about it straight away. And that is a real problem with a lot of other systems that are available is that it takes a lot to integrate this. This expensive car here, you don't want to start having to hack the wiring loom that's in the back of the car, etc to wire in an additional uh, water injection controller. With this box, you just need power, ground, CAN bus, and then connect straight to the pump or the injectors, not having to touch any of the original wires. You can get to that information straight from the OBD. If you want to then add the additional sensors, again, just wire straight into here. It doesn't need any wiring on the factory car modifying at all, which is a real plus when you're dealing with exotic and expensive cars.